frictional games are one of the more crucial developers in the video game industry, I think it's safe to say. Like how id Software popularized the first person shooter genre, frictional games can be attributed with popularizing the first person survival horror genre. You know those types of games where you're not a Navy SEAL, a Space Marine, or a Sunny Jim, you're just some poor asshole in a creepy setting, running away from nasty monsters. Undoubtedly their masterpiece is Amnesia The Dark Descent, hands down one of the most frightening games ever made, but few would probably know about the Penumbra series which is like a stripped back unrefined version of the gameplay we saw in Amnesia. That's not to say they're bad games, but the gameplay and mechanics don't feel as honed as they did in Amnesia. The horror element however is still strong and likely to give you a few sleepless nights all the same. Being that we're in October leading up to Halloween and all that shit, let's spend the month taking a look at some scary games and giving into that most basic human emotion. Fear. Fear of the dark, fear of tight spaces, fear of Jonathan McIntosh, and fear of being trapped in an abandoned mine shaft chased by zombie dogs, as is the case with Penumbra. Now there's three games in the original series, you've got Penumbra Overture, you've got Black Plague and Requiem, and though you play the same character in all three games, there is a noticeable shift in the gameplay from title to title, though it still has an emphasis on solving puzzles. In all three games you're a dude named Philip heading to Greenland to investigate a letter he receives from his supposed dead father. In Overture this leads him to a not so abandoned mineshaft where he comes across a series of clues left behind by scientists and he's aided by a mysterious man named Red, who's gone batshit insane after being trapped in the mine for a bunch of years. As you explore the mines you encounter zombie dogs, giant worms and spiders with a heavy emphasis on simply avoiding all of these enemies entirely as your only means of defense is a pickaxe and a hammer, both of which you suck at using effectively. This is the first game to use the HPL engine, which frictional games are still using to this day, most recently with their game Soma. It's not a powerhouse, but it does show off some impressive lighting effects and runs pretty smoothly, even if it does look like a game made in the early 2000s. Penumbra is pretty old school in the way it approaches its puzzles. You've got an inventory and you will be doing a bit of inventory management in the sense that you'll often have to mix items together at key points. Mix some chemicals together for instance to make an explosive or just use items like the hammer or pickaxe to move through a boarded up doorway. I often found myself just jotting down notes a fair bit of the time as well as there's often a few key codes you'll need to be aware of to get through locked doors. The only enemies you'll ever come up against are either the spiders or the dogs, and the game encourages you to stay away from both of these, though you're still given the option to kill them, it's just finicky as hell. Dogs patrol most of the areas in the game, and it's just as simple as crouching into stealth mode, waiting until their backs are turned, and then just slowly creeping past them. If you are detected, it's better to just haul ass and run away, as trying to beat them to death with the hammer or pickaxe is very tedious. Simply looking at these dogs causes Philip to have some kind of panic attack where the dogs will often instantly detect you, which I think is a way to introduce a sanity element into the gameplay. But also I think so players don't stare at the dogs for too long when they'll probably notice how poorly modeled they are. Spiders on the other hand are mostly just encountered in small tunnels you have to navigate through and again you're often encouraged just to avoid them outright, using boulders to block the path behind you so they can't pursue you, but even if they are able to catch up they can easily be avoided by jumping around frantically or killed easily by whacking them a couple times with your pickaxe. I feel like the combat in this game is intentionally bad. To swing a weapon, you have to hold down the left mouse button, pull the mouse back away from you, then thrust it forward. It takes a while to get used to, but even then it's still pretty clunky, and I feel like they've done this to discourage combat even more. This is the same mechanic for turning valves, pulling switches, opening doors, and all that. Most of the time it's quite smooth, but sometimes it can be irritating. There's a few nail-biting chase sequences where you have to perform a very specific series of tasks to either escape a giant worm or a bunch of spiders. And if you screw these up, usually due to the bad controls, you have to do it all over again. I wouldn't say Overture is a hard game. The puzzles can be confusing at first, but there's always some kind of document or note scrawled somewhere that tells you what you need to do. It's a survival horror game in the sense of the gameplay, but I always found I had an abundance of healing items and batteries for my flashlight. On top of that, you've got a glow stick which is almost as effective as the flashlight and never runs out, so the fear of being stuck in the dark isn't ever a lingering one. It should be said that Overture is a pretty damn scary game, and I attest this to the amazing sound work and just the writing in general. When you come across all these creepy notes left by long dead people talking about all the weird shit they encountered and the room you find the note in looks like it's been hit by a tornado, with blood and guts all over the place, it makes for a frightening atmosphere. 
A lot of Red's dialogue is really well written and delivered and his progression as a character is really well handled. What's also neat about the game's ending is the way it's followed on in the next game, Black Plague. Now, without giving anything away, in Black Plague, Philip finds himself in a research facility known as The Shelter, where the employees have turned into bizarre monsters that patrol the corridors methodically, often with flashlights, and attack Philip on sight. It turns out the inhabitants have been infected by a strange virus, which Philip soon succumbs to, where he finds his mind taken over by a malevolent entity calling itself Clarence. Imagine the darkness from the Top Cow comics, but without the superpowers. Well, thanks for the help. I'm having an existential nightmare and you can't even say a word. On that note, there are a lot of areas in Black Plague that felt like they were references or homages to other forms of media. There's a few areas where Philip is solving puzzles inside some kind of hallucination that feels like they've been ripped straight from the Silent Hill games. Then there's an area of dog kennels that feels like the set of John Carpenter's The Thing, and even the infected enemies reminds me a lot of the Fluke Man from The X-Files. Anyway, with Clarence inside his head, his goal is to meet up with Dr. Amabel Swanson, who appears to be one of the only remaining humans at the facility. Hi, I'm Amabel, Amabel Swanson, and I suppose I'll be your guide for the day. But of course, things don't go to plan, and the journey to Amabel is going to be anything but smooth. You can expect lots of pants-shitting moments, harrowing chase sequences, and complex puzzles to solve. Combining items in your inventory, and keeping an eye on your flashlight batteries and pain pill stash. There's a short but cool segment outside in a snowstorm where you have to monitor your heat level whilst running around and solving puzzles. Overall, it's probably about the same length as the first game, but there's easily more puzzles in total and a much greater variety in the environment. It runs on the same version of the HPL engine as Overture, but does look considerably better with higher resolution textures, better lighting, and higher polygon models. Like Overture, you'll see a lot of assets reused throughout the whole game though. I mean, I think there's literally only one model they use for every single infected enemy you come across. So there's not all that much variety, but the environments are diverse, which makes up for it. Now I won't say anything about how the story ends, but it does kind of get a bit too confusing for its own good. There's a sort of appeal to the simplicity and mystery surrounding the events in Overture, but in Black Plague they kind of directly explain all of the weird phenomena from the first game, and it's a little bit muddled and underwhelming. I hate using the word Lovecraftian, but I think it's the best way to describe it without going into too much detail, and the revelation does kind of come out of nowhere. Probably the biggest change with Black Plague is that they've removed weapons of any kind and instead force you to stay undetected from the infected the whole time. There's also no dogs to avoid and barely any spiders, with even more of a focus on the stealth and puzzle solving. It's a shame that the infected really aren't any kind of threat. I mean, even if you are detected, it's far too easy to just sprint away from them until they stop chasing you. On the subject of no threat, we've got the final game in the series, Penumbra Requiem, which again changes the shift of the gameplay in the sense that it's removed the enemies entirely. Now, this game never really needed to be made, but in its defense, it is an expansion pack and not a full-blown sequel. But I still can't understand why they chose to remove a lot of the key elements from the prior games. For all intensive purposes, Requiem is simply just a puzzle game set in some moderately creepy environments. It follows on right after the ending of Black Plague, and again you're playing the role of Philip, but now you're in these series of cordoned off areas. Solving physics puzzles and collecting keys to unlock a portal that takes you to the next room. Goody. Occasionally there's some kind of narration by a character returning from the previous games, but there's not really any kind of development in terms of the original story, which really did all the resolving it needed to do with the ending of Black Plague. As a result, Requiem is really the black sheep in the series, and I'd go so far as to say it's not even really necessary to play it. I mean, if anything, it ruins the conclusion they set up in the last game. It also looks pretty damn ugly visually. I mean, I'm not one to mark a game down because of the graphics, and I know it's an eight-year-old game and all that, but by this point, we had games like Crisis, Far Cry 2, and Mirror's Edge. And Requiem looks prehistoric by comparison. I mean, it's easily the worst-looking game in the series. It has a real lack of sound design as well, with there being very little atmosphere at all. There's also a massive lack of light sources, so they don't even capitalize on the engine's biggest strength. As a result, it's a pretty piss-poor-looking game on top of everything else. All three of these games aren't going to take you particularly long to finish. I think the first and second are around the same, so you're looking at about four or five hours each, and Requiem is slightly less than that, so maybe three hours or so total. When these games go on sale, you can usually pick the whole bunch up for less than 10 bucks, which is pretty damn good value, and if nothing else, you'll get a pretty good time out of the first and second games for sure. They might even keep you up at night, like the little bitch that you are. They are, however, as I said, less polished versions of Amnesia The Dark Descent, but they do have their moments, and I'd say they should definitely be played by fans of the horror genre. 
The fact these games rely solely on the atmosphere and the writing as opposed to obnoxious jump scares makes them much more tolerable than other shit fests like Five Nights at Frankie's or whatever the fuck that game's called. At the very least, the first and second game should be played. You're honestly not missing that much if you skip the third anyway. If you can overlook a few of the dated control mechanics and simplistic visuals, they will definitely provide a great gaming experience. Turn off the lights, put your headphones on, and let the game scare the crap out of you. In the next video, we'll keep the horror theme cranking along and take a look at Amnesia, a machine for pigs, the sequel to The Dark Descent. In terms of a sequel, this one is about as disappointing as they come, but all the same, we'll take a look at it and see how it goes. Oh, God, no, what have I done?